24 7 365 just kidding not 365 because I don't think this would work in the winter here it might but I don't we don't need it to work in the winter we have a lot of water up high in the landscape for you know eight months a year in the in the cold wet season so we can easily gravity feed cows and whatever we need mostly cows in the winter it this is really so key the ram pump for veggies in this in the growing season and cows in the growing season got a ton of water down here hold on no um this is like two million gallons this bottom pond two acres and then we have another pond up there which is like half an acre but hundreds of thousands of gallons of water in it so it comes down to here with a one inch pipe going to a rigid for the last 40 feet because someone said that helps with performance because there's such a shock wave that it actually expands the poly pipe so this goes 40 feet about to there to one inch poly to the next pond and then that takes about 12 psi pressurizes it to over 40 sends it back up the slope in three quarter inch poly pipe that's a thousand foot run 90 vertical feet this is about 200 foot right here 200 foot ver horizontal and about a 20 foot drop and then a 1,900, 900 some odd foot run to a night on a 90 foot vertical height. Okay, hold on one sec. And so that's kind of the overview. It's amazing, really, really surprising that this tiny check valve, one inch, uh, another one inch, uh, one way check valve as well. There's a brass check valve, air compression, can do all this work, can basically lift water 90 vertical feet with a 20 foot, 25 foot fall. The cost is the waste water, but it's still going where it would be going anyways, down to this pond. So pretty amazing technology. This guy invented in the 1800s. So here we are three days after hooking up these five IBC totes to the ramp pump, which comes from this three quarter inch line, which is almost a thousand feet, goes downhill past that pond you can see down there, another 300 feet or so to the ramp pump. The water that's up here comes from that pond, which is about 70 feet below us from a fall of water that comes from this pond about 20 feet downhill to the ramp pump and then that's 90 feet from the ramp pump up to here so with 20 feet of fall let's see if this works we're getting 90 vertical feet of lift from 20 foot fall of water one inch pipe goes down from that pond for about 150, 200 feet horizontally into four pieces of 10 inch, of, of 10 foot long, one inch PVC conduit, electric conduit. I did that because I wanted to hold up against the sun, although I'm gonna be burying it or covering it in weeds perennially. That rigid pipe supposedly helps it a lot uh, perform better. Someone who's done this before told me, put the last bit in rigid pipe. So the shock wave that happens when the check valve closes doesn't flex the poly pipe a little bit and um, lose a little bit of energy. So here's the uh, IBC totes again right here. Turn this back around. Um, I've just got them teed together. And uh, I'm going to put some hose clamps on there, but I didn't have enough of the right size. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. They're not draining. I'm hearing water. Ah, there it is. So this is completely overflowing. <laughs> it's awesome. I closed these lower ones. One thing you learn when you set these up, 
if you didn't think about it beforehand, is that obviously the lowest ones are going to fill first and then the highest ones are going to fill after. But if you close the top so you can get the bottom ones to fill. So I may prop these up so they're all dead level or probably what may be more realistic is that I don't prop them up and I just don't have every last gallon of capacity in these, which is fine. Um, you do have to have the tops a little bit loose if you want. Oh, this one's overflowing too. So you can see, I mean, it's just continuous water coming in here. Um, it's pretty amazing. So I'll close this one and then we'll build up the water level all the way to the top of this one because this is the highest one. So pretty amazing that 24-7, Every day of the year, we're not going to run this in the winter because I think that would cause problems um, and we don't need to. We have water being pumped 90 vertical feet to this spot 24-7. It's like, I, don't, I haven't measured yet. It's probably a third of a gallon a minute. Whatever it is, it's continuous. And it's enough to fill one of these totes basically a day uh, pretty easily. And that's more than our demand, our water load in our garden in a drought and for our cows. There's five of them. I could put eight up here, whatever. The more, the better, within reason. Um, but that pond stays really full. Even in drought, it's still got a bunch of water. You can see the other pond below it actually from right here. It's hard to tell, but there's a big lower pond and then an upper pond. And uh, I could run this intermittently. If I started to draw that pond down, I could, I could just run it, you know, every other week for three to four days. And uh, I'll fill these. That's plenty of water. And I didn't mention, we are about 30 vertical feet above my garden and about 20 vertical feet above the sea berries we water and about... 15 to 25 vertical feet above the top of the pasture, which is the highest I would ever need to water my cows from. So really it's the garden is the key use, zone one. And the next is watering our big seaberry orchard, which is in a real dry spot. So that's the dizzle. And I'm gonna finish this up just by hooking this quarter, uh, three quarter inch line right to here putting a valve in it and then i can uh connect it to to the lines that go to zone one already so this could keep going uphill by the way i mean i could go you say you can go seven to one so seven times the height of the fall of water that goes to the ramp pump you can lift it all right so here is the water pressure from gravity feed it's like 20 vertical feet good enough to run drip irrigation not amazing for you know filling pots and stuff or filling planters with um you know a hose i'm not gonna get 50 feet out of a jet on my uh, hose but plenty good enough to um do what i need to do in the garden, here's the drip system. It runs out like 10 beds and I have my filter here. So yeah, so I'm gonna drain all these tanks cause there's five 275 gallon tanks. There's a little bit of soap residue in some and things like that, but um, just clean it out, get it ready for next year. We're, we're pretty well watered this year now. We're good to, good to finish the year for sure, but um, Get some beans for dinner, but um, for next year, get into these early season droughts like we've been in lately, and uh, we'll be ready. And then we're watering with pond water, not um, not well water, which is better for many reasons, including way better for the plants. Um, warmer has nutrients which hopefully your well water doesn't, and it's way more resilient than using your groundwater. So, and I can also pump from a pond, another pond directly via a solar pumping system I have. So I just added a whole nother source of water, many 
Crucial functions need many sources to accomplish the function. So multiple ways to accomplish critical functions. Water being one, you're not growing food if you don't have water. Uh, so now I added, I think the fourth, fourth water source we have. And this is really cool. This is just flip this and we're drip irrigating with no electricity. This is a spring powered um, timer. I can flip this to 90 minutes, walk away. Gravity is both pumping our water up to where those IBC totes are. And it's also bringing it down here, pushing it through drip irrigation. I'm psyched. This has been, uh, you know, kind of a lot of years in the making. I heard about ramp pumps in college 20 plus years ago on and off since then. I'm always like, well, I'm going to make one at some point and uh, finally did or installed one. I bought it from land to house and um, installed it, installed the whole system with our permaculture design course and it's working pretty sweet. So good luck, everyone.